The internet is stealing money from music producers without them even realizing it. And it's not just some music producers, this could affect all of us. And I do have evidence to prove this. It's circumstantial evidence, but by the end of this video, I think that most of you will probably agree with me. And you may even realize that you yourself have been stolen from as well. I know that I was. And it wasn't technically anybody's fault except for my own. This video isn't about a scammer or anything like that. It's actually a bigger deal than that. If you're new to the channel, it's nice to meet you. My name is Daniel Grimmett, and for a few years now, I've been running a business support group and coaching community for freelance music producers and songwriters. And I get to study how they act, think, and behave. Not in some weird scientific way. I'm not up in a tower looking down at them or anything like that. I'm just in the community myself on a daily basis and get to see what our producers are talking about and dealing with. And I've noticed a peculiar trend that I want to share with you. So let me set this up. One of the things that we do in our community is track our business activities, our actions. We do this for accountability, but also it indicates to us very quickly where someone may be struggling so we can fix it. Then we get together on a weekly basis and have discussions about our career and business and what's working. Typically, these discussions would be about the actions that our producers are doing throughout the week. But a thing started happening that confused me a little bit. And it wasn't happening with everyone in the community, but it started to become a bit more common. And I wanted to get to the bottom of it before it spread like a virus. A small but noticeable portion of our producers would suddenly become very active in the community, sharing all of these new ideas and strategies that they learned from the internet outside of our community. On the surface, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a mastermind group, so that happens all the time. But when I looked through my notes and had conversations with them, those same producers actually had a decrease in results. So more knowledge, but less results. I would ask them to show me their activity tracker and many of them had just stopped using it or barely had anything on it. And that, of course, already worries me, but there was something that worried me even more this time. What worried me even more this time was that the producer wasn't concerned about this. They actually seemed to be in good spirits, feeling inspired and excited, despite not making any trackable progress in their business. And that is when it clicked in my head. I knew exactly what was going on because this had happened to me many times in the past. The internet is stealing from them and they don't even realize it. So doing what I do, I sat down and had a heart to heart conversation with a few of these producers and shared some rules with them that were given to me by mentors with much more success and wisdom than I have. And I also wanted to share those rules with you guys, our YouTube audience. Rule number one, two of the most valuable assets you have for growing a business or career in the music industry are time and money. I know this to be true because time and money are the two biggest obstacles people say are preventing them from building what they want to build or doing what they want to do. Rule number two, the internet is designed to extract as much of your time as possible. Your time is then used to build other people's careers and businesses. Rule number three, most music producers don't intentionally protect their time, and that's why they feel like they don't have a lot of it. Content consumption doesn't have a built-in throttle, so you have to create your own. Think about other things in life that we may overindulge in sometimes. Most of those things have some kind of built-in throttle. For example, when we eat too much, we get bigger, we feel more sluggish. There is a visual and physical representation that indicates to us that we may need to chill out a bit. Rule number four, it's our own responsibility to set up parameters that throttle our content consumption in order to protect our time and use content to serve our goals, not distract us from them. This will be individual to you. There is not a one size fits all approach because all of us have different situations. I can't give you the parameters that will work for you without 
knowing you. The only thing that I can do is share some of my own and here are just a few of them. I tend to only take content, podcasts, or book recommendations from a small group of people around me that I trust and they understand my situation and goals. This is one of the benefits of being in some kind of support group of like-minded individuals. When I do consume content, it's almost exclusively medium or long form content. I find that short form content has too much topic switching for me to actually retain anything and it rarely provides enough context about who the person is that I'm even getting this advice from, unless it's somebody that I already recognize. It just doesn't work for my brain from a learning standpoint. With that said, I don't deprive myself from all entertainment, but I just watch that stuff after my work is done for the day. I love comedy podcasts and Netflix shows and all the same stuff everybody else likes. But when it comes to consuming content for the purpose of learning, I try my best to keep it to only one to three teachers at a time. So that means at any given time, there are really only a handful of podcasts or YouTube channels that I am consuming. And I know why I'm consuming it. Usually it's because I'm trying to get better at a certain skill and these will rotate based on what season of business and life I'm in. So here's another parameter that I set for myself when it comes to content consumption. If a particular platform, website, or forum is too distracting, then I just don't even use it, even though it could have some benefit. I often think back to the early days of when I was starting my career in the music business. And one of the biggest advantages that I had back then was it was pretty easy to focus, even for somebody like me who generally struggles with focus. So nowadays I try to replicate those conditions as best that I can. I also try to produce as much or more than I consume. For example, if my phone says that I spent 10 hours watching YouTube this week, then I should probably spend that same amount of time actually producing a YouTube video of my own. If I don't have the time to do all of that, then it's an indication that I should probably consume less and free up more of my time to produce and create things. The balance is off. And lastly, I don't set an expectation for myself that I will perfectly stick to all these parameters and rules. I break one of these rules on a daily basis and I just do my best to get back on track. So what I want you to do now are two simple things. The first is if you don't have a support community of legitimate music professionals around you and you want one, then check the links I have in the description, see all the different things that we offer here at Dark Label. The second thing is just take five minutes today and create your own parameters for content consumption so that the internet doesn't just steal all of your <laughs>